Hi, welcome back to Jan Club. Uh, it's been a long time since we were here. We've had a we had that break over Easter, remember? Uh, it was lovely to see one or two of you at the Easter walkthrough. We hope you enjoyed that and that you had a good time celebrating Easter. Uh, we're back today. Um, I'm going to apologise in advance in case you hear any noises behind me. One of my cats has come into where I'm recording this room and he's having a bit of fun behind the curtains. So if you hear that, um, I do apologise. Uh, you will see them later on. Both of my cats are going to have a starring role at the end. We'll put in a little bonus video for you. But we will start off by uh, singing one of our Jam Club favourite songs that lets you run off some energy. My God is so great. So, hope you enjoyed uh, singing along to that one. Uh, so, what are we going to look at in the Bible this month? Uh, last time, do you remember we were hearing the story of Esther from the Old Testament? Well, this time we're going to the New Testament, which is the second part of the Bible, near the back. Um, where we read about um, the life of Jesus when Jesus came to earth and then what happened after Jesus went back to heaven. So that's the story that we read in the New Testament. Um, we're going to think today about um, a story that Jesus told. So Jesus taught people about God in all sorts of different ways, but one of his favourite ways of doing it was to tell stories, because we all love a story, don't we? Uh, these were special stories, though. They uh, are called parables. And a parable is a story with a hidden meaning. So the stories that Jesus told, you could either listen to them and think, that's a nice story, and not think any more about it, or you could think and ask God to help you think about what this story tells you about God, about you, about your relationship, your friendship with God, because there's a special hidden meaning in each of these stories for us to try and work out. 
So today's story that I'm going to tell you is normally called the parable of the sower. But I think it should be called the parable of the soils because it's about different kinds of soil. You'll see what I mean. And I thought it would be uh, good if I went out in my garden to tell you this story. So I'll see you out there. The farmer went out to sow some seed and he scattered it out of his hand. Some of the seed fell on the road. So that just got trampled on and walked on. Or birds came down and pecked it off the ground. Some of the seed fell on rocks and the plants began to grow at first but there was no soil so the plants couldn't get water in their roots to help them to grow and so those plants died. Some of the seed fell amongst weeds and thorns and the plants began to grow but the weeds and the thorns grew up and choked them. And so those plants died too. But some of the seed fell on good soil and those plants began to grow and multiply until there were lots and lots and lots of plants growing up and they became fruitful. So this is my garden with lots of beautiful flowers and trees in it. But all of these plants needed water and sunshine and someone to care for them to help them grow. If they don't get those things, then they wouldn't look as healthy and lovely as they do. So I wonder what Jesus' story about sowing seed has got to do with God and us. Let's have a think about that some more. Um, so I've come back in, um, I thought it'd be good to have another look at that story in a different way um, because I don't think that um, the time Jesus lived and where he was uh, was anything like my back garden. So I'm going to show you a cartoon that shows you what it might have been a bit more like. So here's another version of that story.
So what does this parable mean? Remember, we're looking for a hidden meaning about God or about us and our friendship with God. Well, the disciples, Jesus' special friends, had the same question. They didn't understand this story and they did what you should always do when you don't understand something. They asked. So they went to Jesus and they said, what does this story mean? We don't understand. And Jesus said, let me tell you. So this is great because he's put it in the Bible for us. And so now I can tell you. This is what the story means. He said the seed is like God's teaching. So like when you hear me or Nikki uh, talking about God or other people telling you things about God, things that are true and right, that's the seed. The seed is God's teaching. So what's the seed that fell on the road? You know, the one that got walked on and Ronald came and ate up the seed. Jesus said it's like people who hear God's teaching, but the devil, God's enemy, comes and snatches it away takes it away before they can really think about it or do anything about it and so they just forget all about it. What about the seed that fell on rock? Do you remember those plants? They did begin to grow but they just wilted and withered in the sun because they had no deep roots, they couldn't get any water up. And Jesus said that's like a picture of those who hear God's teaching and at first they're really happy about it. They think this is great and they really mean to kind of follow God and do what he says, but they don't have deep roots like the plants. So they believe for a while, but when trouble comes, they don't want to believe anymore. It's too much hard work, it's too much effort. It might be, so it's maybe somebody laughs at you for you saying that you believe in Jesus or that you come to jam club or something like that and you might get embarrassed about that and you might think I don't want to do this anymore I don't want to listen to God's teaching because people are laughing at me that's what Jesus is talking about there what about uh, the seed that fell among the thorns and the weeds remember the plants grew but then the thorns and the weeds choked them and they couldn't grow properly. Jesus said that's like those who hear God's teaching but they let the worries, riches and pleasures of this life keep them from growing. So at first they think this is great, I'm going to really follow God but then instead of thinking about all the good things that God has said and the things that God has promised they begin to think about things that worry them and they get so bogged down by those worries that it pushes God out. Or maybe you get distracted, distracted by things that are okay in themselves, but when they push God out, that's when they're not okay. So you might just want to spend all your time on your PlayStation or, um, yeah, just all your time out playing with friends, but never giving God any time. Remember, it's not wrong to do those things, but when it pushes God out and pushes out the things that God has said, stops us from thinking about that, that's when it's not good. But there was one final uh, soil, wasn't there? The seed fell on good soil and that seed grew into good plants and Jesus said this is like those who hear God's teaching and they take it on board, they think about it, they obey it, they put it into practice so then they begin to grow not as a plant but as a strong Christian. They begin to grow more like Jesus and that's what we want to be. We want to have the character of Jesus in the way that we treat other people and the way that we live our lives. So that's like the good seed and they go on to produce fruit. Now we're not going to start growing apples and pears but 
the Bible talks about something called the fruit of God's spirit. And the fruit of God's spirit is good characteristics like patience and kindness and gentleness and love. And as we grow more like Jesus, these are the things that people can see in us to know that we belong to him. We belong to him. So as we hear his teaching and put it into practice, these things grow in us. But also we then begin to tell others about Jesus. So we then become the people who are sharing God's teaching with others and hopefully producing, helping to grow other strong Christians. It's great, isn't it, that we can be part of that. So I want to be like the good soil. That's the kind of soil I want to be like. Um, maybe we're not always like the good soil. Maybe we're sometimes like some of the other soils. I'll leave that for you to think about. Uh, so how can we make our lives like good soil? Well, by watching this and going through your jam club pack, you're doing something good because you're thinking about God's teaching. But what else can we do? Um, maybe if we think about what the stones and the rocks and the thorns and the weeds might be in our lives, the things that stop us from thinking about God or from living God's way and try and think about how we could move those out the way so that we can grow as good Christians. What are the good things we could do to help us grow into the people God wants us to be? Um, as well as watching Jam Club and if you've got a Bible or a Bible story book, you could read a little bit each day and ask God to uh, teach you things about him as you read it. If you don't already, why not try talking to God each day? You can do it out loud or you can do it quietly in your head because God can read your thoughts. Some people like to sit quietly while they pray. They like that time of quiet, but you don't have to. You can go for a walk and talk to God while you're walking or even running around. It doesn't matter. God can hear you and he just loves to spend time with you. So in that story, we... Uh, heard about what we want to be is these uh, like Christians who pass on God's teaching so we grow strong and then we can pass on God's teaching to others and we sing a song that reminds us of that um, called Give It Away. Do you remember it talks about how much God loves us and we want to give that love away to everyone around us so that others can realise how much God loves them too. I'm feeling good, good, good in a crazy way God's love changed me more than I can say Can't keep this in, gotta let it out Gonna tell the whole world that Your love is spinning me round and around Yeah, it's turning me upside down I can't believe the way you love me more than I can contain I'm gonna turn around and give, give, give it away
So we're going over to Nikki's now and it's a little bit different our activity this time. You are going to be making something but um, you're going to be growing something as well. I'll let Nikki tell you all about it. Hi Jam Club. I hope you had a lovely Easter. The sun's shining outside my window today and lots of things are growing and springing to life. So grab your craft packs and we'll have a look at what's inside them. First of all, we've got a sheet of newspaper. Yours will have different things on it to mine. And we've got a packet of seeds, sunflower seeds. And we've also got these, these funny little dried up discs of compost. Now in our Bible story today we heard that the seed that fell in the good soil was the one that grew really well. So I thought that we could plant some seeds and give them good soil and everything they need to grow well as a reminder of what we've learned today. First of all we're going to need a pot to grow the seeds in. Well, we haven't got a pot in our pack, have we? Well, I'm going to show you how to make a seed pot out of this sheet of newspaper. So put everything else to one side and make some space on your table because we're going to do some folding. You get ready and I'll move the camera so that you can see. Okay, so you've got your piece of newspaper from your pack. Yours will have been folded up a bit to fit it in the pack. But if you just open it out, it's one big long rectangle. But what you need to do is fold it in half and make a sort of square shape. Make sure that it's um, in line with the edges, that it's folded neatly and give it a good press. The next thing you need to do is fold it in half again and make it back into a rectangle shape. Give your creases a good press so that they're nice and neat. Then open it up again. And what you're gonna do is take this corner, I've got the open end facing you, and I'm gonna fold from the closed end, from the middle, okay, from here. So I'm gonna take this corner and I'm gonna fold it so that it meets up with this middle line that we've just made. Okay, just like that and I'm going to press that down and I'm going to do the same on the other side and make a big point here like an arrow okay so you've got a big triangle at this end now then I'm going to take the top part of this um, paper leave the bottom part here on the table I'm going to take this and I'm going to take this edge to meet this edge okay I'm not going to overlap it it's just going to meet up with it all right, and we're going to press that, whoops, press that down. Then I'm going to take the bit that I've just folded and then I'm going to overlap it and fold it over again. Okay, so the next thing that you do is turn the whole thing over, okay, and you're going to fold it back again, keeping all your creases nice and neat and open it up. And then you're going to bring this edge to that middle line. Okay, there you go. I'm going to turn it around the other way, and you're going to do the same on the other side and bring this edge to the middle line. Okay, now we're going to do the same as we did on the other side, but you've got sort of two pieces of paper here now. Okay, and we're going to fold this edge to meet there, that line there, just like we did on the other side. Okay, and give it a press down and then we're going to fold it again so it goes over the top. Now this time what we need to do is undo that fold and this part here, this part here that's at the top is going to tuck in behind these bits here. Okay, and that's going to form the sides of your pot. It's a little bit on the fiddly side so be patient and also sorry just whiz it around and show you it's got to go behind that bit but also behind 
that bit, so behind the two bits of paper. So we're going to make a little pocket and fold it in. Now it can be a little bit fiddly, you might need a grown up to help you, but with a little bit of patience, you can get that in side and pressed down. Make sure everything's nice and flat and press it down like so. So you've got a little sort of house shape now. Now this bit, the pointed bit, is going to be the bottom of your plant part, of your pot to put your seeds in. And this bit is going to be the opening where you're going to put in the seeds. But to make it fold up a little bit easier um, and open out a little bit easier, we're just going to fold the bottom. I'm going to take this point to here, but we only really want to press down on here. I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to take this bit and it's going to meet up there, but we're just going to press down there. I'll turn it around to show you. So you've got your triangle and you put that point just to there and you're just going to press down there. And then you're going to turn it the other way and you're going to do the same and fold it back the other way. So you've got a fold in both directions. OK, now then we're going to take this and open it out. OK, and you'll see when you folded it, it starts to want to fold down. And make the bottom of your little pot. Okay, and just give all your edges a nice little squeeze and make it firm and stand up. Okay, so that is a little newspaper seed pot for you to plant your seeds in. So you've got your pot, now you need your good soil. And this is where these discs come in. Now you can't plant a seed in this hard stuff. Um, so what we'll need to do is we'll need to do something to it to change it. So we'll put your pot to one side for a minute. You're going to need um, a container or a tray and some water for this next bit. So put your discs in the tray. There we go. And cover them with some water and watch what happens to them. Hopefully it won't take too long. Just leave those to soak. And we'll come back in a minute and see what happened. So, what happened? Well, they turned into these funny, squidgy, ugh, yucky sort of sausage shapes, didn't they? But what's actually inside is some really good soil. Um, now, I've popped my pot onto a little tray because it gets a little bit damp. But um, what you need to do is each one of these um, has got like a little sort of paperyish wrapper on them and so you need to peel that off it gets a bit mucky so you'll need to wash your hands after this and then just sort of crumble it into your pot okay and do the same with this one i've done some of my others already 
um, and I think you've got six of those in your pack so that should be just about enough to sort of fill your pot I don't know halfway up something like that so oh, throwing it on the floor as well that's not good is it okay so give it a little scrunch up and a press down so inside the pot you've got your um good soil or your compost let's move all that out of the way it's a bit of a messy job so you might want to do this outside um, if you've got outside space to do it in okay and once you've done that and you've got your good soil in your little seed pot that you made um you need your seeds now those were in the little brown envelope and you should have three little sunflower seeds and you need to pop them into your pot but don't pop them all in the same space sort of spread them out a little bit so that they've got room to grow okay and I've just rested those on the top there and then just poke them down with your finger where the seeds are and then give your pot a little gentle tap and cover them over with the soil or the compost okay now what you need to do then is with your pot on a little tray or maybe even like a little plate or something a little saucer you just need to gently add some water to it not too much um, but you just need to water those um, seeds and that's why it needs to be on a little tray or saucer because the pot will get um, damp with the water so I'm just going to move the camera back up now So you've planted your seeds and if you put them on a sunny windowsill and water them and look after them, they will begin to grow. And these seeds are going to grow into really tall sunflowers, hopefully. Um, so I thought it would be fun to do um, and to encourage you to look after them. Um, what I thought would be fun to do is to have a competition to see who can grow the tallest sunflower um, so once your seeds have started to grow and they're getting a little bit taller and they've got two sets of leaves you'll see two little sets of leaves two leaves sorry come out first of all and then they'll grow another set so when they've got two sets of two leaves then you can start to plant them outside or move them into a bigger pot if you don't have um, much outside space um, and you can plant them outside um, in the garden in the ground um, and actually you can plant this paper pot actually straight away into the ground you don't even need to take them out of the pot because this will just um, just rot away um, and it's not bad for the ground or anything so you can plant them straight in that but if you're lucky enough to get all three of your seedlings to grow then you might want to separate them out and give them a bit more space because three big sunflowers growing in that tiny bit of space might be a bit cramped okay um, so as they get taller you might also need to think about getting a stick or a cane um, and putting that in the ground or the pot next to them um, to tie them to to help them to stand up tall and not get blown over by the wind so next jam club i'm going to show you how mine are doing um, and i'll let you know how you can enter the competition so give it a go um, and as you grow your sunflower remember what you learned from the bible today and be like the seed in the good soil i'll see you soon bye So now you've watched Jam Club, what will you do with what you've heard? Will you forget it straight away as soon as this video finishes and you go off and have your tea or go off and play somewhere? Will you remember it for a while but then forget about it? Or will you really think about it and try and think how you can put into practice what you've heard today? How you can grow to be more like Jesus and share his love with those around you.
helping other people to grow into the people God wants them to be. At Holiday Club last year, we learned a great song about Jesus is my hero. Are you ready to shout it out to everybody that Jesus is your hero so that hopefully he can become their hero too? to the end of this month's Jam Club, let's finish by praying together. Lord Jesus, help us to grow into the people you want us to be. As we read our Bibles and learn about you, help us to grow. As we pray and sing and worship you, help us to grow. As we try to live the way you want us to, help us to grow. When we find following you difficult, help us to grow. And as we tell other people about you, help us to grow. Amen. So I uh, hope you enjoy working through your packs and making, um, making your plant pots and growing your sunflowers. And we're going to look forward to seeing your photographs of your sunflowers. Remember, Nikki said next month she'll tell you how you can enter the sunflower competition and we can see who grows the tallest uh, sunflower. Um, we will be back uh, next month 
um, at the end of May, we'll send you a um, reminder out on the day so that you know to look out for us and you'll get your packs through your doors a couple of days in advance. Um, so till then, uh, take care of yourselves, uh, take care of your family, uh, keep thinking about the things that you learn about Jesus and keep growing as Christians. Uh, so God bless, stay safe and we'll see you next month. Bye. And while I'm out in my garden, I thought you might like to meet my two cats. They've appeared on videos before. This is Dorka. And this is Pugwash. Their brother and sister. My God is so great, so strong and so mighty.